Welcome in Jesus' name. There it comes on. Um, Good to have you here this morning. We have a special morning ahead of us, as every worship service really is, but there's a couple special things going on today. We have the Free Lutheran Bible College Ambassador Team that will be doing a concert for us, their very first concert of the summer. They've been training all week, and uh, they'll be kicking kicking things off and doing a lot of traveling and uh, singing in a lot of churches this summer. We're blessed to have them to start out here today. And we also have um, Lennox's baptism today. And so it'll be a neat morning and a wonderful morning as we uh, look to God and to God alone uh, again to worship Him. Just a quick few announcements for you as you look at the bulletin, just a reminder of the congregational meeting after the second service today. And there's a lot of opportunities coming up with the Vacation Bible School and such. And I'm going to call upon John here for a quick announcement with regard to ushers. And as he's coming up, I want to remind you today, um, there will be an offering that will take place. It's the church offering as it takes place um, in the pews today during a certain song. Um, If you'd like to give um, towards the ambassador team and for the summer and their expenses, there's a box that's on the table um, in the back, and you can make the check out there to Free Lutheran Bible College or FLBC if you desire to do that at all. So just to let you know about that. So John, I'll call upon you here to give that announcement. There you go. Good morning, church family. Um, I'm John Krell. I'm the head usher. And I just want to announce that next week, right after the first service at 10.05 or whenever we get done, we're going to meet right here. Um, all, all of you men who received an email from Mary Jo Dyrud on May 1st, um, we, we've expanded our ushering teams to six teams now and seven in each group. So just a quick meeting next week after the first service to identify who your teammates are and team captains, and we'll just touch on a few highlights of the ushering duties. So thank you. Thank you, John. I'm going to leave the mic on, whoever this is, okay? There we go. But let's pray as we begin today. Let's talk with God. Heavenly Father, we come before you just as we are again this morning, and we thank you for the gift of music um, that you have given and allowed us to hear and to, to, to sing even today as we'll sing as a congregation too. We um, ask that you would receive all that praise, that you would work on our hearts today as testimonies are shared, as your word goes forth as well. And we thank you for that gift of baptism that you have offered as well to work that faith in a, heart, in a young heart. And Lord, we just look forward to what you have today. We pray for the things that will take place, the congregational meeting after the second service. We put things in your hands. Take people's agendas out of the way. And may your agenda go forward with what you desire. And uh, we pray for that. And we ask you to intervene and to be the one that take, takes takes our hearts today, and and draws us unto you. We pray these things in your name, Jesus, and look forward to what you have for us. Amen. The call to worship this morning comes from Psalm 27.1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Let's stand together and sing of our light, our salvation, and the stronghold of our life.
You may be seated. I'd like to thank you all for having us today and for being willing to be our first concert of the summer. It's exciting. I would like to start by introducing ourselves. We are the 2023 Ambassadors. I'm Melina Tweet, and I'm from Portland, North Dakota. I'm Michael Holtz, and I'm from Plymouth, Minnesota. I'm Brianna Heinrichs. I'm from Waconia, Minnesota. And on the piano, we have Ryan Erickson from Roseau, Minnesota. The theme of our concerts this summer is Jesus as is the light of life. And our theme verse is John 8, 12, which says, again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. There's a call comes ringing o'er the restless ways. Send the light, send the light. There are souls to rescue. testimony that I'd share. Um, my name is Michael Holt, as I just said, and um, I want to share of how God showed me the truths of law and gospel, and how my salvation is based solely on Christ. My entire life, I have believed in the truth of God's existence, yet my relationship with him, with him being my savior, has only started a little bit more recently. There have been different layers to my understanding of my salvation. As a child, I understood Jesus as my Savior more than at any other time. As a true child, like faith is easy to come by as a child. However, growing up, I failed to understand my role. As a child, I never thought about the roles in a relationship. But as I grew older, I pridefully thought that my part in this relationship was to do good works. However, I had mixed up salvation with sanctification, and this led to some troublesome years. As a youth, I verbally believed that grace alone saved, but in my heart, I thought that it was my devotions and my works that gave me this assurance of salvation. So when I eventually would fail in reading the Bible, or I would forget to pray, or felt like I wasn't giving enough to others, I questioned whether or not my salvation was true. Because I felt that I couldn't achieve my salvation, I rested so much on grace that I ignored law entirely. 
I simultaneously ignored my guilt while also saying that it was grace that saved me and gave me new life. And all the grace part was definitely true. I wasn't acknowledging my sin at all. So how could they be forgiven? This dynamic between grace and sin became more apparent as time went on. So eventually I left high school and I went to the Bible college. And at this point, due to my ignorance, I could no longer find the sweetness of grace. And the Bible started to feel empty to me. And this came to a front as I no longer could ignore my faults. I was consistently reminded of them through my comparison to sinners in the Bible. When we would read stories in class, I would think, I'm nothing like these heroes. I'm much more like the villains in it. And so I struggled for many months with this, with all these questions. And this is how God saved me, though. He broke me with the law. He showed me my sin. God showed me so many of my faults that I no longer could run from them. I needed to face them. But I already knew that I couldn't face them, not alone. And that is how grace came to find me. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which Christ prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. God showed me that he alone was my salvation. My faith in Jesus means that I can give up my thoughts of self-salvation. My salvation is his work alone. And these three words in John 19 kind of sum it up. It is finished. Nothing I can do can reverse what God has done on the cross. And all I get to do is accept it. It's a gift. And I can rest knowing that his work alone is my salvation. My works are for his glory, but that's sanctification. His works are my salvation, and his works are finished. Thank you. I saw my Lord condemned to die. I saw my Lord condemned to die. They sentenced him to die upon a cross. I saw
As we all gain up upon Christ on the cross, we invite you to stand and come before the Lord, acknowledging our sin and praising God for his mercy and grace. First John 1, 5 through 7 says, This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us all sin. may be seated. During this next song, I would like to invite the ushers to come forward and take the offering. And I'm going to read Psalm 56, 13, which says, For you have delivered my soul from death, yes, my feet from falling, that I may walk before God 
in the light of life. Thank you, ambassadors, and there's still more coming, so we're going to be blessed with more songs um, after the baptism and after the children's message today. That's going to be the main message today is the children's message, so we're going to jump ahead a little bit on things um, in that way. But uh, first of all, we're blessed to have Lennox's baptism today, and just to let you know, I'll call you guys up at the right time, but uh, we'll get her set just so you know what's going on. Um, we need to hear, first of all, the Lord's command regarding baptism. We read in Matthew 28, it says that all authority, Jesus said, has been given to me in heaven and earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe whatsoever I have commanded you. For, lo, I am with you always, even to the very end of the age. And we need to next hear how graciously our Lord Jesus re- Jesus Christ receives little children and opens the door of the kingdom of God to them. In the Gospel of Mark, it says, and they were bringing unto Jesus little children that he might touch them. And the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw this, he was filled with indignation and he said unto them, don't stop the little children from coming to me, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say unto you, whoever shall not receive the kingdom of God like a little child shall never enter therein. And Jesus took the children in his arms and he blessed them, laying his hands upon them. So you see, it's in thankfulness and in faith that we bring our children to the Lord in holy baptism in order that they may share in his blessing. And though they are sinful human beings under the law of sin and death, They may become children of God by grace in the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. Would you pray with me as we continue? Eternal and almighty God, we again come to you this Sunday 
We thank you that in your church, you have instituted this means of grace, baptism, in your holy name, and that in baptism, you promise to be our Father, to save us from sin by your Son, by you, Jesus, our Redeemer, and to regenerate and to sanctify us by you, O Holy Spirit. We pray today that you'd receive Lennox as he's brought before you, and let him receive the eternal blessings of holy baptism, and grant that he may grow up in your church as your child. And may the fear and the love of God prevail in his home. Teach him to fear and to love you, O God, and preserve him from all evil until he shall come again unto you in your heavenly kingdom. In your name we pray. Amen. I'll call you guys up at this time. And we'll have you stand back here. I guess we've got to get the right angle for the camera to catch this. And it'll be a neat thing to catch. And we'll put you guys back here and the sponsors can, you guys can stand next to them. And so I start with you, um, Scott and Britt. A couple questions for you as we begin. Do you desire that Lennox shall be baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit? If so, answer, we do. We do. The second one's the tougher one, but again, it's by God's strength that you can do this. Do you promise to instruct him in the word of God and to nurture him in the chastening and the admonition of the Lord? If so, answer, we do. May the Lord keep your going out and your coming forth from now and forevermore. And Lennox, I'm going to make the sign of the cross on your brow and on your breast. You know why I do that? So that you will be a child of the risen Lord Jesus Christ. You want to bring him close here. Lennox William Stusey, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. If you want to hold him up, I'll just say a prayer for him here. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has made you his holy child in baptism and has received you into his believing church, may he strengthen you with his grace unto life everlasting. Amen. And you did wonderfully. (laughs) And this is where, again, I like to give God a big round of applause because God's the one who's done the work here. So let's give God a big round of applause for what he's done with things that way. And I think that's the first time I've seen somebody with the thumb sucking the whole time, which is great. (laughs) Wonderful. Now, for you as sponsors, um, Scott and Jess, um, 50 questions. No. (laughs) Actually, what it is is as sponsors, you're to be witnesses that Lennox has been baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, but you're also to remember him before God in your prayers and to make certain as far as possible that he's reared in the faith that he's taught the word of God and given that Christian example to follow. So that even now as he's been grafted into Christ through baptism, that he may abide in Christ throughout his life. See, we believe that God gives the gift of faith and baptism, but that that gift will be lost unless the child is taught the word of God, given that Christian example to follow, and upheld by prayer. That's first of all, Scott and Britt, it's your responsibility, then as sponsors, your responsibility, but then it's our responsibility as a congregation as well to uphold them in prayer. May we be faithful in the responsibility and privilege that we have. God be praised. Give him the honor and the glory. Amen. 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 Thank you, guys. You bet. Thank you. I'll call the children up for the children's message today, and that's going to be our main little message part as well. So if you want to come on up, we've got a lot of ABCs to go through today. And I've been given 10 minutes, so we can go for a little longer. Actually, what we're going to do is we're going to cover a few extra letters today so that we can hit Z next week on my last Sunday. So we're going to hit a, a few of those, but let's see if we remember all them. And I, again, have my cheat sheet here, so... With all these letters. Let's start with A. What are the A letters? Ark and apple. Yeah, ark is that salvation aspect, the apple of God's eye. We're so important to him. B, Bartholomew, discipleship, right? And then C, church and cross. The cross is a key part. We remind of what Jesus has done. D, Daniel. Dare to be a Daniel. Dare to stand up for the Lord when it might be even the hardest. E, 
eternal or eternity or everlasting life. To be reminded of that. F, fruit, the fruit of the Spirit. G, gold. We weren't bought with gold or silver, but with the precious blood of Christ. Now, you guys ready for this one? H. Oh, that was pretty good. Can, can you guys do the hallelujah? There you go. Good job. You guys are almost better than they are at that sometimes. But praise be to God. It's that word that's the same in every language. And then I is the name of God. I am, yeah. He always was, he always is, he always will be. J, Jehoshaphat, yeah. We're reminded that God had Jehoshaphat send out the uh, um, choir ahead of things, the worship team into battle. So it's kind of interesting. K, Kidron, yeah, the Kidron Valley. Jesus was bound. Is not, no, he went to Gethsemane, he crossed it, he came back bound and went to the cross for us. L, I heard it, yeah. Leviathan, the great sea monster, the great dinosaur that God created. M, yeah, Mary Magdalene. We did that on Easter Sunday as she went to the tomb. N, neighbor. Yeah, we're to love our neighbor. And then the one that the kids don't often remember. O, obedience. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. And by the way, all of us have been children at one time, so even if we're older, but we're to obey in the Lord. P, prayer. You remember the two examples we used? The Pharisee and the publican, a couple more Ps with things. The Pharisee wasn't really praying. He was kind of touting himself off to God. But the publican, the tax man, was humbling himself before the Lord. Q, quail. God provided the quail. Um, the people of Israel had um, grumbled a bit about eating the manna every day, but he, God provided the quail, and he showed that to them. R, Rhoda, I heard it, yeah. The servant girl who went to the door with Peter and got so excited she forgot to open the door for him that he was there. Um, S, stars, yeah. And by the way, the ambassadors are singing about being light. God says in the, in the word that we're to be like stars in the universe. We're to shine for him in that way. T, do you remember last week? Oh, I thought I heard it. Toes. Remember the toes on that great statue that uh, um, Nebuchadnezzar saw in his dream? And then that rock that came and hit those toes and hit those feet and knocked it down. That rock is Jesus Christ. Now, we're going to do a few letters today and keep learning a little bit. So we're going to do U. You guys have any good ideas for U? Uh, nobody's jumping at U because that's a little tougher one, isn't it? What is that? Unity. That would have been a good one. Universal, that would have worked. I actually chose a name. What's that? Uriah. I didn't take Uriah the Hittite. I took a different one. I took one of the kings of Judah. What's that? Uzziah, yeah. Can you guys say Uzziah? That's kind of a unique one. It's Uzziah. Uzziah was quite a king. He was the 10th king of Judah, and he was 16 years old when he became king, and he reigned for over 50 years. And the neat thing about Uzziah is he started out really well following God. He ended up not finishing so well because he came to a point where he thought he could do some of the things that the priests were doing and uh, kind of became prideful in himself. But Uzziah is a reminder for us, as we start out well, we want to keep going well. That's going to fit for our, our last letter today because we're going to do U, V, W, X, and Y. Any ideas for V? Victory, yeah. I mean, got to go with victory, don't you? I mean, the Bible says, but thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's where we have the victory over sin and death 
from the devil. Jesus has done it for us, just like um, Micah shared earlier. I almost called you Caleb again, so forgive me. <laughs> but Micah, thank you for sharing that, that victory that we have in Christ. Now, Uzziah, victory for V. Any ideas for W? Water. Who said that? Yeah, John, you're right on the money. We're going to go with water. You guys like water? It's kind of important with things, but Jesus talked about water in a very special way. I mean, this water that I used up here today for the baptism, it's not some special water. The only thing that made it, um, that God used that way with that visible means is that he had his word, the word of God was connected with it. That's the key <laughs> to things. But Jesus talked specifically about a certain type of water. He met this lady by a well. Her, she was a Samaritan. And uh, he told her about some special water. It's called living water. <laughs> the water that the Lord can give to us can produce life. It's not some special water we get out of a tap or anything. It's that spiritual aspect of things. And that living water that's there for us at the woman at the well. In Jeremiah, it talks about that living water too. But it's a water that will spring up within us. You aren't going to literally shoot water out. <laughs> but you're going to live your life for Jesus Christ. Are you guys living your lives for Jesus? With his help, Right? that living water that we can have each day as we spring forth, so to speak. Now, that's Uzziah, V for victory, W, water, that living water, X. There's not a lot of X's in the Bible. So I had to go with Xerxes. King Xerxes is also known by Ahasuerus, I can't even pronounce that name, Ahasuerus, you know what book in the Bible King Xerxes is mentioned? He was a Persian king. Yeah, the book of Esther. You ever get a chance to read the book of Esther? Esther was called by God for just a time like that to save her people because they were going to destroy all the Jews. <laughs> and Esther stood up um, to King Xerxes and showed him the right way with that. She was the queen. She was, one of, she was his queen, and so that's the important part about it. But Xerxes is the one to remember for that. Now, that leads us to the all-important one for why today. You guys have any ideas for why? Yeah, what's your idea for why? Yeah, we could have done yeah. Or yes. That would have been a good one. It really would have, yeah. You are, that would have been, that would have been another good one. What's that? Yahweh, that would have been a good one. We already did I am. Yahweh is the Hebrew word for I am. You know, you know what I did is I, I was thinking of you guys. And so I used for why the word young or you. Now, did you catch what Jesus said? In the book of Mark, he said, unless you have faith like a child. And you catch what Micah talked about too. As a kid, sometimes it's easier to believe <laughs> because we have a childlike faith. <laughs> and you know what the neat part is too? In the book of First Timothy, chapter 4, verse 12, these are the words that God had Paul write. Listen to this. And I think all of us need to hear this because sometimes we as adults don't act things out very well <laughs> when it comes to the things of God. But this is what he said to the, um, Timothy there. He said, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. Okay? Don't let anybody think of you as less because you're young, because you're shorter and things that way. But you set an example for the believers. You guys get to be the example. In your speech, so in the words you use, um, in conduct, in the way you act, in other words, in your love, and in your faith, and in your purity. We as adults could learn a lot from you guys. 
we shouldn't look down on you because you're young because you are to set that example for the true believers as well. And you guys can be that good example. And uh, we look to that. Now, you guys don't always do the right things. You're not always childlike. You sometimes are childish. But all you have to do is look around at some of us who are childish too. (laughs) But if we have that childlike faith, God's the one who can help us be that good example. Can you guys be that good example with his help? Yeah. I actually pray for that every day. I pray that I would have childlike faith, (laughs) that I wouldn't get so complicated with things that I would remember who Jesus is and what Jesus did for us. So real quickly, U is Uzziah, V is victory, W is water, the living water, X is... Xerxes, that's a hard one to remember. And then why young? That you'd be that good example as the youth. Next week we'll do Z and we'll finish it off, okay? Okay, can we pray together and then we'll let the team come on back up and they're gonna do some more singing for us. Would that be okay? Do you like their singing? I do too because they're singing to the Lord as well and it's beautiful. So let's pray together. Lord, help us to have that childlike faith. And help us to act in such a way in our speech, in our conduct, to be that good example. Lord, thank you for being the one true God. Thank you for the living water that can spring up within us. And Lord, thank you that you can help us finish well and to do well as we go forward in you. Be with these young people, be with each of us, that we may walk with you. Thank you, Jesus. We pray in your name. And everybody said what? Amen. Let's go head on down. And team, why don't you come back up?
Um, I'd like to thank you all for coming, and we're going to perform one final song for you, but as we're going to do this, I'd like to remind you one last thing, that know that as you journey through this life, God is with you, and the light of life will now become your eternal light in heaven. No, never going to walk this journey alone. No, never going to walk alone. No, never going to walk this journey alone the lord will see me over to my heavenly home no never gonna walk this journey alone no never gonna walk alone no never gonna walk this journey alone the lord will see me over to my heavenly home no never gonna walk this journey alone no never gonna walk alone no never journey alone the lord will see me over to my heavenly home weary pilgrim please don't give up now there's nothing coming near you that the lord don't allow if your feet can't travel one more mile let the loving arms of jesus carry you for a while for a while for a while for a while no never gonna walk this journey alone no never gonna walk See me over to my heavenly home. The devil may try to lead your heart astray and trip your feet and trip your feet to make you his prey. But when temptation starts to close in, God will make a way to escape from sin. Escape, escape, escape. escape. No, never gonna walk this journey alone. No, never gonna walk alone. No, never gonna walk this journey alone. The Lord will see me over to my heavenly home. Oh, be not, be not afraid, my friend. But God will always see you through. Oh, be not, be not afraid, my friend. My God will always see you through to the end. No, never gonna walk this journey alone. No, never gonna walk alone. No, never gonna walk this journey alone. The Lord will see me over to my heavenly home. No, never gonna walk this journey alone. No, never gonna walk alone. No, never gonna walk this journey alone. The Lord will see me over to my heavenly home. No, never gonna walk this journey alone. No, never gonna walk alone. No, never gonna walk this journey alone. The Lord will.
will see me over to my heavenly home. The Lord will see me over to my heavenly home. Never gonna, never gonna, never gonna, never gonna, never gonna, never gonna walk this journey alone. Let's close together by worshiping the light of life, the everlasting day, the one who takes all sins away. Please stand. Let's give God a big round of applause for the ambassadors being here today. Thank you, ambassadors. And if you get a chance after the service, in between services, to talk to one of them or something that way, and there's a table out with our Bible college stuff out there as well. But it's good to praise our Lord and to know that He's the one who's done it for us.
He is, as it said, he's the light of life, the everlasting day. Let's close by praying that prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. So join me if you would. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And may the Lord bless each of you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord make his countenance to lift upon you and may you know him and walk with him for he is the one true God. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, go in his peace today. Amen.